We'd like to give our attention to Chris Hadnagy. Does anybody not know Chris? Yeah, the one with the man crush raises his hand. <laughs> I think most of my employees. And who are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we, we we certainly appreciate Chris uh, Chris here today, and um, you know, just as a just a friend, want to say you know he's a big guy, but he's got a big heart, and we all know that, don't we? So. Uh, we appreciate all he's done for social engineering. Um, as uh, 16 years experience as a practitioner and researcher in the security field, he certainly puts efforts forth in training, educating, and really helping to drive the awareness that social engineering is one of the top threats in the security industry. Let's give our attention to Chris Hadnegi. His theme is SE versus Predator, using SE in ways I never thought. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <clears throat> My voice is going as every DEF CON, as you know, so by the end of this talk, I'll sound like the godfather. I'll be like, I'm going to send you an email you can't refuse. So, you know, we'll go with that. Okay, so my job is awesome and fun. It really is. And a lot of people ask me, is it really fun? And it is. Think about it. Every day, I get to hack people, and I get paid for it. And that's really cool. Um, as, oh yeah, I didn't start my timer. I have extra time. <laughs> um, anyhow, um, people ask all the time, like, "How fun is it?" I mean, think about it. I get to send phishing emails every day. I get to vish people. I get to break into places and steal stuff, and it's all legal. That's kind of cool. Right? I don't get to go to prison for it. I get tased a couple times once, but you know, it's all all fun. You know, you think about. Some of the things that I've got to do in, in my career, I got to break in over a dozen dozens of places. I've sent over 15 million phishing emails in my career, all, all legal, by the way, pretty cool. I've made thousands of phishing calls personally, and my team has made thousands in addition. I got to write three, and I'm now going to announce I'm working on my fourth book uh, as we speak right now. My, um, my first book is pretty dated, right? It's pretty dated, and... Um, it's got some bad information in it, like the whole chapter on NLP and my three Wikipedia references that made me a moron. So um, <laughs> those are going away, and I'm rewriting the book, and I'll, I'll just tell you now, um, this will go nowhere out of this room, right? <laughs> it's going to be called Social Engineering, the Science of Human Hacking, and it uh, will be out in uh, early 2018, so I'm working on that, on that now. And I get trolled by Dave Kennedy nonstop, which is fun, you know, I mean, kind of, maybe. No, not at all, but it looks like fun sometimes to the outside. And, and I get to travel the globe doing things like hacking people and teaching and meeting all sorts of cool people. And I've reconnected with so many students here at DEF CON. So it's really a fun job until it stopped being fun all of a sudden. Because I did a little research um, that involved looking at how pictures had automatically embedded GPS data in them. And I started talking about that research publicly. And I couldn't get anybody interested in it until I met one reporter. Her name was Lori Siegel. Actually, she's here. She's in the back right there. And um, she invited me to come on CNN. And we got to talk about, about a couple topics. And one of them was how this, this, these images are being leaked on the internet and that people are using them to geolocate women. They're being harassed. Um, there's a slew of revenge porn that, was being, that this was being involved in. And we got to do some really interesting research. Um, and at the time, that's all it was for me. It was research. And I got this really cool time to go and talk with Lori on CNN and, and be on national television talking about revenge porn. And at the time, again, it was still just research. And then things changed because all of a sudden, I got a lot of phone calls and I got emails from women who were victims of revenge porn and they were asking for help, and there was nothing I can do. There was absolutely nothing I can do, because and to, to fix the problem, you have to hack someone else's computer, right, to prove that it was her ex-boyfriend or husband or whoever that uploaded those images, I'd have to do something illegal. And it felt really bad. It felt really dirty, because here I am, these poor women saw the, saw the news story, and there was nothing that can be done. So we started putting together some resources to help them, some information. We would give out, uh, I had an email that was kind of a template that would give them places they can call, places they can go to for help. But still, there really wasn't, wasn't much relief. But it did, it did give me some semblance of relief that we had something to help for. But it was a big eye-opener. Here I was, 
doing my job, doing the coolest things on the planet, I thought at least, and then reality hit, right? Reality where all of a sudden you're realizing that there's a lot of people out there that are being affected by these things in, in, very, in very negative ways. And as you can see here, there was just some, some real problems. And then I had another, another interesting thing occur. I had an organization call me, government employee. Uh, they saw the news story with Lori on, on geolocating pictures and they, they wanted me to do something that I really didn't feel comfortable with. We all remember Ashley Madison, right? We all remember Ashley Madison. And, and Ashley Madison, you know, it's not a great site, of course, uh, you know, unless you're into cheating on your spouse. But um, the, the thing about Ashley Madison that was, that was difficult for me when it came out as a breach was that you didn't have to authenticate, right? So if you had an account on it, I could sign up an Ashley Madison with your account. There was no... There was no two-factor. There was no anything. You didn't get an email back saying, hey, did you really want to do this? You signed up. It was just, it was, you went there, you put an email in, you got an account. And then there was no proof that after you got the account that you actually did anything wrong. So we had a lot of companies that were calling saying, hey, can you scrape the breach data and see if our employees are there? And I was like, no, I don't really want to do that because it feels like unless you could prove that the person was doing something wrong, um, you know, why we want to go on this witch hunt? And that's what it kind of felt like to me. It was like a witch hunt. So I, I kind of declined that. And then I had this one, this one uh, client come to us and they said, look, we have a reason why we want you to do this. Because we see some traffic on our, on our network that was encrypted and we think it goes to places that involve child pornography. So we just kind of want to see if we can look at the traffic at, at like the Ashley Madison dump and see if anyone in the organization has done that, then maybe instead of their hundreds of thousands of employees that they had, instead of looking at all of them, focus just on those and see if th those people were doing anything else sketchy at work. So I did. I said, okay, you know what? That's a decent, that's a decent thing. I can, I, can, I can think I can do that. So I scraped the data and man, we found there was thousands of employees that were on Ashley Madison. So, you know, I, I made, a, made a little database for them, handed it over and said, you know, use this sparingly because you don't know, you know, you know again, I gave them the whole spiel that what we just talked about here. And um, lo and behold, there was an employee that they were able to target and he was using his government issued phone and devices to take videos of him raping children. Yeah, yeah, pretty sick stuff. And, um, and he was trafficking children in the Philippines. And um, Michelle and I were sitting at a restaurant in DC with the head guy while he was landing from one of his trips and being arrested. And that, 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 felt, that felt good because where is he now? <laughs> That's where he is. <laughs> that felt good, right? Not, 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 of course, what happened. That felt horrible. But it felt good that there was something I did. I never, I mean, I'm, a, I'm just, a, just a hacker, right? <laughs> I don't have an education. I'm like, came out of high school, got kicked out of college for writing a war dialer. You know, so I'm like, so I'm like, this, this doesn't even make sense. And now I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, wow, something I just did had a profound effect and maybe saved children from, from being hurt. So that, that, was a really, that was a really big deal for me. It was like kind of a pivotal moment in my life where my career started taking a turn and I said, man, I can actually use these skills for something else, right? Then I got a, and then I got a phone call. Phone conversation went something like this. Like, um, hey, can you help us catch a guy who's trafficking children? And I'm like, um, <laughs> you don't really want me, right? You probably want the cops. You don't really want me. And, they, and they're like, well, we need to establish there's enough proof because the cops won't do anything until there's proof. So I said, okay, you know, maybe I can come and talk to you guys. So I went and I talked, I talked to uh, this organization about helping out. And <laughs> come on, this was such a heavy topic. I had to add some humor in here somewhere, right? Because, you know, we're all getting pretty somber. But yeah, so I thought, okay, you know, maybe I can do this again. Maybe I can use SE skills in a way that I never thought of using them. So I sat and I said, let's, let's come up with a game plan. And here was my game plan. We were going to do lots of OSINT on this guy, right? Because I wanted to feel, before I did anything, I wanted to feel that there was some semblance of proof that this guy really was a child trafficker, that he was producing child pornography for sale. So I did lots of OSINT. Then I established, my, my first plan was to establish that he had his, his first ticket, his plane ticket, and that it wasn't, that his first one was alone, but that his second ticket was coming back with two children. Okay, so that was the, that's what we had understood, and I need to establish that that was a real fact, that that actually happened. And then third, I wanted to obtain his home address. 
Now, we had, of course, we had a bunch of other stuff going on in the background. So they were collecting data on what he was doing and trying to tie it to him. And then this was, this was my job. So that was the plan. Okay, now before I go on, I need to say I'm not a lawyer. But my lawyer said that what I'm about to do is okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hope that they led me the right way. Because <laughs> I'm going to play you some um, altered phone calls of this exact case and the things that I got to do. Okay, so we're gonna talk about it. So stage one, OSINT, we doxed everything. I had this guy's family here, I know it's a great one, right? Research, okay. <laughs> so I had to establish everything. I needed to know his family history, where he, where he came from, because he wasn't from America, I needed to understand, um, but he was living in America at the time. So where he came from, the w places he travels, where he likes to travel, his likes and dislikes, you know, and, and as disturbing as this is when you do this work, you realize you've got to actually look at them as a real person, right? You've you, you, you got to take out the fact of what they're doing, and you've got to say, I need to understand that this guy may like the same music as me. He likes baseball. He may like the, the same things as me as hobbies outside of hurting children. He has hobbies. I need to understand those because depending on the attack vectors that we're going we're gonna to perform, I needed to know all of that. Um, what businesses does he say he's a part of or what, where has he worked? Right, the licenses that he may have, things like business licenses, other things, and then of course any houses, apartments, property, and other things that that he would own, that we would then, um, you know, be able to obtain information on him. This is what we call profiling, right? So this helps us develop a profile on this target. So we have a target, we know all these things about him, and now we can say, here's here's what we can utilize, and all this information. To, to target this person. After this was complete, you know, we had like dossiers, we could write a book on this guy. Um, then we moved to stage two. Stage two was calling airlines over and over and over again until we found someone that could confirm some things, which was confirm that he had a flight, give us the details of the flight. Okay, so what pretext did I use? Well, I developed a pretext that I was his assistant. I was his personal assistant, and then I was verifying flight details because he had some very important guests flying in with him, and I needed to make sure because he had a messed up flight before. There was a lot of stress and anxiety with the messed up flight. Now, I need to, I need to stop for one second and say something about this call you're going to hear because I'm looking out in the audience. There's a ton of students that I've had in my classes here, and what I'm about to play breaks the rules of what I've taught you in five days in the course. Okay? So, this may seem a little hypocritical, but I want to explain. First, our mantra is, leave them feeling better for having met you. Okay, that's our mantra in professional social engineering. Um, we do not use fear-based or threat-based pretext ever in our work. But those rules go out the window when I'm dealing with pedophiles. Okay, I don't care how they feel at the end of the day and I don't care if they feel scared with my pretext. So once I can establish the fact that I think this guy is legit, then those rules go out the window. Now, that may be self-justification, but there you have it, okay? <laughs> so um, after 20 calls, here's, here's what occurred. Let's listen to this. Hi, um, sorry, I'm sorry about crying in the background. Um, my, my name is Paul. Um, I'm a personal assistant for it, and uh, we have some very important guests flying in with him on your airline, and we had so many problems on the flight out, I just need to confirm that the tickets are still active and that he has seats right next to each other. Can you help me with that, please? And, and, and again, just excuse the noise, I'm sorry. I have a sick kid, and I'm driving to the doctor and trying to take care of this now. Oh, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear all of that. Um, I'm, I, I really need your confirmation number to be able to help you. Okay, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm driving, but let, let me just see. He, um, my boss basically just called me and chewed me out, because normally I do all these checks before he flies, but my kid's been super sick, and I'm a single dad. So I don't. I think I think he gave it to me. I have a note here written down. Let me just see if this is it. But maybe an old one. Is it a XDC VFW? Uh, I'm sorry, no. That is a confirmation number, but it's not the right one. Okay. Um, let me see again. I'm, I'm driving. I'm sorry. Can, can, how about this? Can we look it up by his name? Uh, yeah. Let's try. Uh, what is his name? 
Okay, let me spell it for you because it's it's a it's it's a hard name to spell. Okay, superb. Um, so what, what I need to confirm is that he's going from, and that there's two other tickets that will be children that are booked with him. Do you, do you see that? Um, let me take a look. I, uh, I'm not sure if I can tell you that. Um... No, listen, I, I, I understand. Like I said, I'm driving to the doctor and I have my kid. I don't have all this information on me, and he's really not happy, and I don't know how your boss is, but... When he gets upset, it can really be bad. The flight out was delayed two hours, and he missed the meeting, so he was mad also because of that. And I, I know I know, none of this is your problem, but I could just really, really use a break today. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, listen. Uh, I'm Yeah, you are a lifesaver. I would love to have them. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I hope your kid feels better. They're, um... <laughs> and... Okay, I can't thank you enough. You probably saved my job. And now, if I need to call back, I'll have to go through all of that. So, um, look, i got to run to the doctor's office now. But um, I, I can't just... Man, you really... You gave me the break I needed today. Thank you so much. Uh, no problem. I'm glad you're the help. Have a good day. Okay, so crying baby works, right? <laughs> crying baby works every time, I'm just telling you, right? I mean, you hear it and you automatically feel sad, right? For especially single dad things, so, you know, again, student, 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 I'm sorry, that breaks all the rules, okay? But, <laughs> but we, we had to do it, okay? Then, now we established that he had these flights, I got confirmation numbers, I established that he had two children with him, um, on those return flights, so now we just needed to get his home address. So what we did is um, we, we knew through other OSINT, um, because he had a, like a Facebook page where he posted normal things, and when he traveled, to make his travel appear normal, he would post pictures about his travels. So we knew that he rented from a certain rental company. Uh, so my, my pretext was gonna be, let me get to that slide there. So my pretext was gonna be that uh, we did OSINT on, on, the, on the area that he rented and we found a local pizza shop. So we got a pretext that I'm, I'm calling from the pizza shop and that this guy left his iPad after he, after he ate lunch at my pizza shop. And, um, and then what I wanted to do was return it to him. So I'm gonna try to get his home address from the rental car company so I can mail him his, his, his iPad back. And uh, we knew this was gonna be difficult, right? Because, I mean, man, you're calling a rental company and they're gonna give you some, some strangers, some strangers, um, uh, address. So again, I'm breaking another rule, students. <laughs> I use I use bribery of offer of free food um, to the to the target to to get it. I'll give you the end of that in a minute once you hear the call. Car rental. This is Chris. How can I help you? Hey there. This is uh, Tony from Big Al's Pizza over on Fifth. Uh, <laughs> I got a problem. Hope you can help me with. Oh, Big Al, I love that place. You guys got awesome pizza. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Got lucky. And if you help me out, I, I, I swear there's going to be some free food in it for you, okay? Oh, man, I'm in. What can I do? I got this guy in here, two little girls. They had a great lunch, paid cash, were showing me pictures of his dogs and his kids and the travels on his iPad. He leaves, and one of my gals goes to clean the table, and his iPad's sitting there in the seat. He left with a, with, with a budget rental agreement that's sitting in the iPad, so we just figured that, you know, that's where he rented the Crap. car. I tried to get in, the thing is passworded, the rental agreement is like torn and wet, so I don't have a name on it, but I figured I'd call you and see if I, you know, if I can get it. This happened yesterday, so it wasn't even today, but I got so swamped and it was sitting on my desk, I figured I'll, I'll, I'll try it out. Now, so I got his name from the rental agreement, um, but no address or anything, so I'm not sure, what can we do? Well, uh, let, me, let me see if you return his car yet. I uh, literally can catch him and you can leave it here for pickup. Okay, so let's let's check. Um, that's a good idea. But his name is uh... Ah, Chef Tony. You know what you like? Did he return the car? What do you want to do? 
Oh, darn, man. Well, okay, so this iPad looks brand new. So he's probably freaking out thinking he lost it somewhere, and it's it's passworded and locked up, so it's probably not even on, online. But I don't know. How, how, how do I get this back to him? Like, if I had his address, I could ship it to him. So what if I give it to you, and uh, you look up his address, and you ship it back? And I'm sorry, man. We, we can't take responsibility for those items unless we find it in the car. Now, uh, let, let me think. Uh, so, I'm not supposed to do this. <laughs> Chris, you're a genius. Yeah, you know, I, I can do that. I'll do that. I'll ship it out today. What's the address, man? I hold it. It's, uh... <laughs> you know what, Chris? You're awesome. This is going to be a $25 gift card for you here. I'm going to put it in your name. What, what's your full name? Oh, you, you seriously don't do that, but... A lot of pieces of toast. You know, here I got this guy's iPad. He had two beautiful kids with them. I think, and he's probably wondering where it is. Got all his business stuff on it. So you just saved my day, and you probably saved his day. It's worth twenty-five bucks. Cool. Thanks, Tony. This is awesome. No problem, man. So I I called Big Dollar Pizza, and I bought a twenty-five dollar gift card. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I didn't want the kid going in there to get his gift card and be like, what the heck, you know? So I wanted, to, wanted him to be rewarded for his work, you know, he did help me out, so, you know, he gave me the guy's, yeah, so, that, no, he went in and I just, you know, he, I, I don't even know, I don't know the follow-up, I'm hoping he got the pizza and everything was good. Yeah, I called him and just said, look, uh, some kid's going to come in, we're giving him an award for great job at work, his name is Chris, you know, last name, I want to pay with a card, 25 bucks, so, yeah, he got his pizza, so. We handed over all that OSINT to the federal government. We handed over all the call data. We handed over all his geolocation data that we had. We had handed over his proof of flights. And that was enough for them to start an actual investigation um, in, into this guy. So. <laughs> yeah. So that was rewarding and exhilarating, but you know, you could ask my, my wife, there was like many nights where I didn't sleep very well, or at all, <laughs> um, because of the things you're dealing with. And it took, took dozens of hours and it was a lot of stress. And it was not my job, right? So I was still running the company, trying to keep my employees employed, you know, my family happy while doing this. And, and that's, that's when I started to, to think. That's when it hit me. And I looked just like that gorilla when I had this thought. I said, what, what if I can harvest talent from this amazing community that we have of people that are just so smart, way smarter than me, and can do things that I can only dream of doing, right? There's a group of people downstairs right now hacking a car, okay? <laughs> There's people in this community that are amazing, that, and we can build tools to track and uncover perpetrators, people who hurt children, people who traffic children and spread child pornography, and that's when it hit me. I needed to start something, so I did. I started the Innocent Lives Foundation, and it's an actual real foundation, 501c3 foundation, that is being launched uh, today, as a matter of fact, here at DEF CON. Yeah. Yeah. So, a little bit about it. Here's our, our mission statement. I'll tell you the story of how it came about in a minute. But our, our goal is to unmask anonymous online child predators to assist in bringing them to justice. Now, what does this mean? Because we're not vigilantes, right? As much as I want to don a Batman outfit, which would have really bad on me, you know, that tight. No, I don't want the cape, because if I put it, and don a bat and go beat these people, that's not the goal. It's not the goal, right? Um, we save more kids by turning all this information over to law enforcement and to working closely with law enforcement in order to, to have them brought to, to justice. So what I did is I assembled a team of people that can help. Okay, so I talked to Rob Barra. Um, when I put Iron Man, I don't mean that as the moving Iron Man. This guy like runs Iron Man like I eat pizza. It's like unbelievable. Like this guy, like he's the most in shape person I've ever met in my life. I think he actually eats nails. Okay, ex-army ranger, and he's experienced in traf and tra um, um, trapping 
traffickers. <laughs> that was a, a difficult sentence to say. So he, um, he tracks human traffickers. That's what he's done for many years after he exited the military. Wonderful guy that has a lot of skill in this area. And then I talked to Tim Maloney. He's not only my business lawyer, but he's also very heavily involved in the nonprofit world. And I figured if we're going to do this, we kind of need a lawyer, right? Need a lawyer to help us out. And then I spoke to Neil Fallon. If you don't know who Neil Fallon is, then get out. No, just kidding. That's the lead singer of Clutch. Uh, we developed a friendship over the last few years uh, because, um, interestingly enough, I reached out to him to come on the podcast. And, um, and at first he's like, who's this weirdo that has the title human hacker that wants me to come on his podcast? And no joke, this is how it happened. He, he, he was releasing um, um, Earth Rocker album and someone before, like a month before its release, someone stole it and put it on the web. So he calls me and he says, hey, remember you wanted me to come on your podcast and make you a deal. Can you, can you track people who steal stuff and put it on the web? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> So he gave me the site, and literally within an hour and a half, we had this guy's home address. We had his whole life story. We knew everything about him. So and it ended up being he was like some 20-year-old kid that worked at the uh, CD factory in Germany that stole the CD and came home and pirated it and put it on the web. So, you know, he was like, I want to know more about this. So we ended up hanging out a bunch of times and going and seeing him at his shows and stuff. So I figured... You know, if you're going to do something like this, how cool would it be to have someone like him with such a great name that can help bring awareness to it? So I called him, and he says, okay, look, so, man, the first time you reached out to me was really weird. But now, like, you're asking me if I want to be part of a foundation that's going to trap child traffickers. Like, he goes, do you realize every call you make to me is just really, really good? It gets weirder. He's like, like, what's next, man? And I'm like, no, I swear, this is it after this. I mean it. It's like, no more. Nothing else can happen. So right now, this is our board, and, um, and we met, we met um, over the last few months and came up with, the, with this plan. So this is how we want to do it, right? We're going to seek the assistance of the appropriate members. Now, these are the questions that come up. What does that mean? Well, obviously, we, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure everybody in this room wants to help. Um, you know, you can't hear these kinds of things and not want to help, but we have to be able to vet people and make sure that they're, you know, make sure that they're legit, right? Because the other thing that we are very aware of is that um, you know, if you are, not saying you, I'm saying a general thing, if, if anyone who is a child trafficker or a pedophile, they can look at that as, hey, maybe I can, they can help me find the sources. So we're going to be vetting people heavily. But we need the talent from this community because without it, we can't, we can't succeed. Right? You guys can do things that normal humans cannot do. Right? And it's amazing when you think about it. Uh, we want to create tools that will assist. Uh, you know, there's a tool out there right now that somebody has put out there that if you're traveling, like for a hacker con, you can upload a picture of your hotel room and it, it catalogs it and then law enforcement could take a picture of a child who's being trafficked and run it through this database and it will correlate that data and tell law enforcement which hotel it was taken in because hotels use certain type of carpeting, certain type of bedding, serpentine, certain type of curtains. That's an amazing tool, isn't it? I mean, they caught child traffickers just because People like you are uploading images to this database from their hotel rooms, you know, and that sounds like a weird request. Like when you're traveling, <laughs> anyone know the name of it? Such an amazing tool, I forgot the name. I'm going to get the name. It's going to be on the site, okay? I will, I'm going to tweet it because I'm going to get it. But it, it's, there's tools like that that are out there for, for, this, for this purpose. You know it? Yeah, it's uh, trafficcam.com, traffic but it's T-R-A-F-F-I-C-K. Trafficcam.com. That's when you upload the photos of your hotel room, right? For our law enforcement database. I think that's the one. Um, I, it's, it's spelled T-R-A-F-F-I-C-K. Cam.com. Okay, I'll I'll check. Uh, we'll check it out after, and I will. Or or oh, here it is. Okay, yes, this is it. This is it. As you hand me your phone, thank you. It's called the Polaris, the Polaris Project. Okay, this is the one. P O L A R I S Project dot org. This is the one. The name the name now is this is it. You upload a picture of, of your hotel room to the database on the website and it puts it out there for law enforcement to be able to correlate. What I'm saying is how many of you didn't even know this existed before right now? Right? 
So think about this. We need to get that message out there. We need to be able to build these kinds of tools to help law enforcement. We need to be able to, to collectively spread the word about that because we can all make a difference when it comes to this. So how else will we do it? Well, we're going to use open source because we're not, I need to stay above the law, right? I still have a business and a family and my own kids I have to protect. So I'm not looking for people who want to hack into things illegally. We need to do this all above the board because it's not just TV life. You know, criminals get off because of a mess up on one thing a criminal can get off. So if we do anything illegal, it can make the whole case nullified. So we have to be able to say that the things that we're doing are above, are above board. And we're gonna use OSINT to do that. And then we're gonna establish, and we already have established numerous relationships with law enforcement agencies. Um, to be clear, we are not agents of any state agency. That is not the case, right? We are not law enforcement, but working closely with law enforcement. Um, sh shortly before, before DEF CON, I uncovered 51,000 child erotica images on the open web. 51,000 child erotica images that can, nothing could be done about it. Want to know why? Because child erotica is not illegal. As long as they're not showing the lower genitals of a child, it doesn't matter. Isn't that disgusting? And yet, um, these images all led to paste bin sites where they were selling the videos of those child being raped. 51,000 images, right? So we work closely with law enforcement to get those things out there so uh, we, can, we can hopefully even make just a tiny, small little dent, okay? So about the org and then we can, we can talk. That's the, that's the foundation website, innocentlivesfoundation.org. That's our Twitter account. And we're gonna be, um, of course, just reaching out to the community, asking for help and multiple ways about how we can do this. So I, I left a lot of time because I wanted to just like, kind of open it up and see what you guys thought and be able to answer any questions you have. And also it's a really heavy topic. So I didn't, you guys are so quiet. I haven't had the room this quiet like in <laughs> decades. Yes, sir. Do you have a framework or are you going to develop a framework to liaise with the law enforcement in various states and agencies and see if you Yeah, that's a good question. So the question was, do we have a framework for for creating those relationships with law enforcement. So this is all new for me. So my, our present relationships with law enforcement have come about somewhat by accident. Um, I do a lot of training when it comes for a social engineering with the, with the US government and law enforcement agencies. So a lot of those relationships have led me to say, hey, you know, can you help me out? Like, who would I talk to about this? And I've gotten in with, with some of the federal agencies to be able to work out those relationships. So I would not call that a framework, because in my, life, you know, my mind, a framework would be a definite process for how to do this properly. Um, so yes, the uh, Rob Barra, the, the one I put up there, uh, he's, gonna, he's the COO of the foundation. And his job is to help us to develop those processes and uh, also the vetting process, so that way we handle both the volunteers as well as the hand off the law enforcement properly. So yes, yes ma'am. Um, is it a foundation or is it a 501c3? Uh, that's a great question and there is a difference, which I did not understand. It is a 501c3, that is what the application has gone into the federal, the federal government and I did get clarification after we did all this, that a foundation is normally like some kind of family fund type of thing. So. Um, um, it's, it, but it is a, 50, a legit 501c3, and we, the application has been accepted. We're, you know, we're waiting for the final approval papers from, from the IRS, and then you know, it's, it's all go time from there. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, um, that, so the question was, uh, how has law enforcement reacted to this so far? So you can kind of imagine the first phone call that I had with, uh, with, with law enforcement didn't go so well because they were like, uh, so you wanna do what? And you're, not, you're you know. So here's what happened is I found, I found a, a, and it really was by mistake, I'm, I'm working um, a case of a, a father who has taken by force his daughter away from the mother and somehow has manipulated the courts so he, is, he has won every full custody of her. And um, she, the girl has alleged being molested by him. Um, and, the, and the courts are still doing nothing. And in doing research into her name, which was, uh, she, they are, the, the father's name is, is Russian, and doing uh, research into his name, I came across some paste bins and I thought, oh man, maybe this is 
some proof of this, of this stuff happening. And that led me to some really, really dark stuff. I mean, some really bad things. So I called after the first a few initial calls, I called back that contact and said, hey, I have something that may be interest of you. And as soon as I handed over actionable intel, now I'm their best friend. So it went, and it wasn't planned, right? I mean, obviously it can't be planned. But um, at first they were like, I wonder who, you know, who this guy is. You know, I'm, I'm emailing them because I didn't have the, the, the org at the time. And I'm emailing them from social-engineer.com, you know. So, you know, it, it, it looks a little weird. And, um, and now we have a very, I mean, honestly, this guy probably calls me once a week. And we talk about stuff. And, and um, he, the, one of the agents I'm in touch with, he specializes in revenge porn. Um, so I've, I've been talking about that, and another agent, the, the group of them specialize in crimes against children. So I've gotten some good traction with that, but it started off really rough. It's a great question, though. Uh, let me go back here. I don't want to look at you because you'll make me cry. Okay. You That's my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I want to. So I have one state agency right now that I met with, and, um, and I had another one approach me here. Um, um, that heard through the grapevine about this and said, would you be interested in working with local state? And that, yes, I do want to because I think um, a lot of times that these problems will exist on a local level and it will be easier to get local law enforcement involved as opposed to state, state law enforcement. Uh, yes. How can we know that traffic cam is safe? How can we know that the traffic cam? That, that website? Okay, that's a good question. Well, you're not, they're not asking you to upload a picture of you in the hotel room. So it's not like, go lay on your bed and upload a picture. So <laughs> that's a different website, honey. That's a different website, okay? And if you upload any pictures of you anywhere, I will kill the internet, okay? So, <laughs> so that's how it's safe, okay? <laughs> um, the Polaris Project is the one that uh, Paul found, that's the, that's the one. That's a legit project that was made by someone in this community. It's, it's, it's amazing and it's backed by law enforcement. How do they know that you're in that hotel and that room? Well, no, the pictures are uploaded anonymously and your name is not tagged to it. Yes. How are you protecting yourself? Yeah. Yeah, so the question is how am I protecting myself? And I'm assuming you're meaning from a, um, an internet perspective. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so from an internet perspective, it's, it's, um, it's a, a lot of VPNs that don't come back to me. And um, a lot of VPNs. <laughs> and machines that I don't leave laying around for my children to use. Yeah, that's, that's basically it for now. Sir? Correct. That's a really good question. So to be clear, it's like we're not going out on the internet and typing in "give me child porn" and then looking for for you know those people that are that are doing it, um, and then and then you know that's not the process that we're following. So a lot of times it comes from an example that case I'm working now where this father took the daughter and there's an alleged. Um, um, child abuse allegation and he is known for sex crimes against children now we will take that name and look and try to uncover what he's doing online um, in the case of the child erotic images we now have a list of usernames from those sites and we'll see if we can uh, uh, correlate them to real people in the real world right so um, down the road what I hope is that there will be more collaboration um, for protection of what you're talking about. That's what I hope. Bad idea. Yeah. Do not try this at home. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I don't, I don't know. I really suck at that. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. Talk to me afterward. I, 
Uh, you know, here's the thing is like, it, the, literally the, the way this came about was, was just that. It was like, I got done with that job and I was so stressed, but it was, there was so much exhilaration from the fact that he's off the streets. He's no longer trafficking children into this country for the purposes of sex and pornography. And I'm like, I want to not do it ever again, but how do I not do it now that I know it exists? And, um, and that, that hit me, so I said, I, I need to have help. But I didn't think about, how are we gonna market it? <laughs> it was like, well, these 400 people know. They'll tell 400 people, and then <laughs> maybe in 18 years it will become something, you know? <laughs> I, I don't know, I'd love to talk to you about that, okay? Yes, uh, boy, there's so many hands, um, sir. Yeah, so that you go to that website and you you you'll put and right now it's it is literally like like two pages. You know, it's it's the it's it's the information about who we are, like what you heard here, and there's a contact page and there is a donation page. If you want to contact, you do that. That will come directly to us and then we will reach out and talk about how we go through vetting and, and get people involved. Okay? That will be on the contact page. Thank you for that. Uh sir. Yeah. There will be nothing else that I that I have any ideas of yet. Right now, it will be donation based, and it's and it's 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 free time on my part until you know that that's it. Yeah, I mean, I, right now it's all been me, um, uh, and and Rob has been helping out. Um, you know, it's it's the, the donations are going to go towards not me because I have a job. The donations are going to go towards helping hire people to build tools. Let me, let me get, tell you why. That's a really good question, and I guess I should have explained this better. I had a moment at a time where we needed help on something, and it was something I could not do. My technical capabilities were not there, and I called a really good friend in the industry, and I said, hey, can you help me do X, Y, Z? And uh, he said, yeah, I can do it. This week I'm heading out of town to do a red team job. Can I, can I call you next week? I said, no problem. And next week came, and I called him, and he's like, dude, I came back with the flu. I can't even touch a keyboard this week. Okay, next week, my boss sent me on another job because I was out for a week. And literally, this went on for like three months to the point where it, it no longer, the data was no longer useful. And I said, you know what, though? If I could have said to him, you know what, here's three grand. Your, your hourly rate, whatever it is, it's 200 bucks an hour. I need you for 15 hours. Here's three grand. Do this project. Then I could have got that because he wouldn't have been taking, he could have went to his boss and said, hey, this guy wants to contract me. You know, are you cool with that? And I could have got his time paid for. And that's where the donation is going to go. We want to build a tool. We want to contact Polaris and say, hey, let's partner. Let's get you on the site, whatever. Maybe another tool like that. That's where the money's going to go is towards that. And then if we need to hire staff because it actually becomes something that I hope it will, then that's where it, it will go. Um, so that's the plan for it. I, I should have explained that better, so I really do appreciate you, you asking. Yeah, thank you, sir. So, not, I'm not a lawyer, but how are you going to avoid being an agent of law enforcement if somebody comes to you and says, can you do this? Doesn't that, uh, under those legal terms, make you an agent? No, and that's a good question. The only way we become an agent of law enforcement is if law enforcement asks me to do it. Oh, that's what I'm getting. oh yeah, law enforcement is not asking us to do this. Right, so um, agent of law enforcement would be if the FBI came and said, hey, can you go crack, you know, crack into this guy's life and see who he is? Uh, then we would be an agent of law enforcement, but I don't foresee law enforcement doing that. If someone here is law enforcement and you want to do that and talk to me about it, talk to me about it, please. <laughs> but I, that, that is not something that I think is gonna happen anytime soon. Okay, just, oh, we'll go along the line, yes sir. So it's a lot of just normal OSINT SE tools, right? So what we did in those jobs, I use a lot of Maltigo. And if you don't know Maltigo, I don't know if those guys are still here, but you should talk to the Perturva guys. Maltigo is like my, like if I was on a deserted island, that's what I would bring is Maltigo <laughs> and, and my wife, okay? But I bring Maltigo, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love you, honey. But I really would bring Maltigo. It's awesome, right? So it's just open. It's like Google dorking, um, Maltigo, and then the many, many, I'll tell you who's amazing is uh, Michael Basil's site, IntelTechniques.com. He just put together a slew of search engines that, that just rip open the internet on all open source stuff. It's amazing. And there's even some really good dark web search engines out there now, um, believe it or not. So that, those are the things that we're, we're utilizing. 
Okay. Terry. Asking for a friend. How are you? Uh... <laughs> oh, no. Really? This is a dirty pool. <laughs> so when you're doing these things and, and you're stumbling across the, 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 the horrible things that you're, you're, you're hitting that you're inevitably going to find, how are, you, how are you protecting yourself from legal action as... I mean, how do, you, how do you prevent, or how are you protecting yourself from looking like a perpetrator instead of one of the good guys looking for him? Yeah, um, that's where the relationships with law enforcement comes in. So the question was, how do I not look like one of the bad guys, right, to, to law enforcement, I'm assuming is what you're asking. That, that's, that's where working with law enforcement closely um, comes in to protect that, right? So letting them know what we're doing ahead of time working with them and saying this is where we're, you know, this is what we're looking for, this is who we're looking for. Um, the, the people that will work with the organization will be known by our contacts in law enforcement. You know, there's, there's a whole process for that so we don't end up on the bad side of that. And, and just to be clear, you know, because there, um, there has been some research about people who generally work in Children Against Crimes units um, on the Internet. They don't last very long, and that's because eight hours a day they're spending looking at that crap, and you can't. I don't think a human brain was meant to do it, if if you're not if you're not a pervert, right? If you're not a deviant, um, and and we won't ever. That's not going to be the case. That's not the that's not as the goal, right? Of of doing that, it is to uncover people who are selling it and trafficking it, not to find the child porn, right? It is it is, it is to uncover the people who are making money from it, who are who are conducting business in doing that. So that those are the people that we're hunting. Yes. <laughs> I'm schizophrenic already. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so that's actually a very, a very good question. So you have to, you really do have, I think with any work, you have to temper yourself, right? And you can't, so for me, like with that one, that one case that I talked about, um, you know, my daughter doesn't know this, but there was one point at night where I just went upstairs and I just crawled up next to her and just hugged her for an hour. And she's like, you're being weird. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> but <laughs> just let me hug you for, for a minute, you know. <laughs> let me just lay here and, and hug you. And I do. And, um, you know, this is not the purpose of the speech. But you ask, um, I, I have a very heavy belief in God. So I spend a lot of time um, after these things, like making sure that I fill my mind with better thoughts, things like the Bible and other things that will help me. Uh, balance the garbage out of there. So, you know, everyone has their own methodology. That is mine. Sir? Uh, there's some software that can detect scans you don't have to look at full image. Yeah. Have you looked at that? Um, I haven't. I don't know. I, I've heard recently about these, um, about these things. And I also, and here's something that I have used, is, oh, I'm sorry, yes. Um, he asked if there's software out there that, that will block, like, that will just, it, it sees that there's skin in an image and it blocks it. So, yeah. Yeah, but there's a, you know what? Um, yeah, that sounds like a really shady site. If you want to block skin, go to hot dog, hot do, hot, hot dog dot com. Yeah. No, no, don't listen to that guy, okay? But, um, but what I'm, um, what, there's, there's text-based browsers, right, where you can disable all images. Like the Tor browser itself, you could say disable images. And I've done that numerous times where, because, you know, there's usually a description in the image or under the image, and you can block the image. You don't have to see it. So the image doesn't load on your computer. All you do is get the text. You know what's there, but you, you have the URL, you have that, but you don't need to see the image. I've done that numerous times when I know what I'm going to. Right? Um, so the, that guy behind you had his hand up for a million years. You have no blood circulation in your hand. You don't have to worry about being dragged into court as a witness or having to testify as to how you gathered up. You're, you're going to want to come up with some procedures. And if you have people working for you, you're going to want to try and protect them as well. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to advice. So I appreciate it. Thank you for that. Hisham. Um, I have a quick question. Are you aiming to keep it in the U.S. or is it international? Well, um, for right now, we don't have any plans on, on, geo, on, on limiting geolocation because these people generally don't just stay in the U.S., right? Language yeah, language support will be a big thing, sir. So I would hope so. 
That's one of the things, the strength of this community. You look at something like Set. Set was made literally over a glass of whiskey between Dave and I. I called him, like, I got this cool idea. Can you do it? He's like, I could do that, no problem. Bam, and literally it was like an hour later, he sent me a Python script that was set 001 or point zero. It was like amazing, right? And I'm like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Like, you, you just put that together. Now we can fish people and I don't have to go buy a tool. And then it went from that to what it is today, which is like the most ridiculous thing ever, right? It's like a whole suite of tools. That's the, and now he has a team of people working on it, open source. That's the goal is to have this community help do that kind of stuff. Yes, ma'am. Are you thinking about how to screen volunteers? Yes. That yes, that process is a re- So, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll give more detail to any volunteers, but that's a, that's a good point. Um, we will be um, vetting them all through our own, like we have access to PI databases and stuff legitimately, and we will be running all names through our federal contacts. And if they come back with, and this is before anyone even gets anything, uh, for work, you know, that, that, will be, that will be the case. So that way we will not be, hopefully, I mean, you know, of course, it's not 100%. And um, we are going to reach out and hopefully start working with people that we know from the community, too, because there's some verification in that, too. So the question was, will this expand into other areas like human trafficking and things like that? Um, so the original goal was to also have it cover revenge porn because that's a big problem. But uh, some things happened in the in the or, in the um, making of this foundation where that did not come to fruition. So um, we felt at first it may be the best to just focus on this, and then and then as we grow as a team and we get more answers the answers that you guys and gals have so we know our process and framework that we'll be able to do that. Thank you. I look forward to your help on that too and advice. Thank you guys. Thank you so much.